All right, and we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. But just to kind of reflect on what we talked about real quick, we talked about our WWE Monday Night Raw review. We also had our uh, NXT preview, and now we're going to jump on into a segment that happened on Monday Night Raw. Chad Gable calls out Bo Dallas and ultimately did not wind up the way he probably ultimately anticipated it would it would go, excuse me. But uh, yeah, no, a lot of fun. A lot of fun that happened. But before we move on any further, I want to remind you guys to use the, uh, the gsmcpodcast.net, hit up the tips and donations link, you know, um, you know, be a part of the show, send a chat, give me your opinions, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, leave a positive review here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love and positivity, 1,010%. So yeah, don't be afraid to, you know, chat. There's no, there's no such thing as a wrong chat. And the link is at the gsmcpodcast.net. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, dig on into this subject matter. So, like I said before, you guys, um, you know, you saw what happened on Monday Night Raw. You saw Bo Dallas being called out by Chad Gable. Chad Gable, you know, that's, uh, you know, it was uh, pretty crazy how he, uh, you know, how he felt so confident in doing it. Obviously, the only reason why he felt confident was because he kind of knew he had, uh, you know, two people lurking in the back to have his back. Two strong people, you know, obviously. So, um, yeah, Chad, Chad Gable calls out Bo Dallas. Uh, Bo Dallas is automatically just attacked by the Creed brothers. Not really anything crazy, not really any, you know, suspicion in terms of that. You saw Bo Dallas walk out. I was surprised he didn't walk out to any entrance music or any kind of earring thing. Maybe perhaps kind of laying a trap down for Chad Gable. And uh, yeah, he fell for it. He fell for it. He hit uh, pretty hard. So, uh, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. I loved seeing the Chad Gable and the Creed brothers come together. And uh, I think ultimately together, those three superstars kind of reminds me of a Kurt Angle and the greatest tag team with Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. But, um, you know, I really honestly hope this promo didn't hurt that future possible success that these three superstars could possibly have together. Um, Obviously, you have a great tag team. You have these three Olympic, like Olympic, you know, wrestling athletes and stuff like that. Um, Chad Gable. Went heel, he went totally heel, man. He went like too far off the edge. Maybe he went a little too heel, like it's crazy. No, but uh, no, thought it was kind of crazy how um finally it was, you know, fans wanted to see Chad Gable and the Creed Brothers come together, you know, earlier, probably I would say, ever since you started seeing problems happen within the within the Alpha Academy, Maxine Dupree, Akira Tozawa, and uh, you know, uh Otis. <laughs> I love how Maxine Dupree like Otis. But uh, no, like these three guys should have been, you know, should have been promoing together for a pretty long time now. And I maybe think WWE possibly could have shot themselves in the foot by not, you know, kind of doing this earlier. I, you know, if you had Chad Gibble win the money in the bank briefcase and then you had, you know, the Creed brothers ultimately help him do so. And then you have his goons and stuff like that. Chad Gable has the briefcase at any time, any time he can cash in to become champion. And with those two guys lurking behind you, you know, on your side, Chad Gable could have been a pretty good, um, could have been a pretty good option of winning the money in the bank besides, you know, them throwing, uh, throwing it away, giving it to Drew McIntyre, having the feud between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre just get pushed further and further and further he did not screw him once he did not screw him twice but he screwed him three times for for drew's shot at the wwe world heavyweight championship and i kind of got a little tiresome i honestly didn't think that they didn't that they should have done that uh if if, i I feel like it should it would have been the same thing if you had cm punk destroy the ladder match for drew mcintyre comes out cost Drew the chance to even become a Money in the Bank winner, but instead you have Drew McIntyre become the first ever cash-in who cashed in, on not on the same night, but whoever cashed in and, uh, you know, deemed it a triple threat match, like he was the first ever one to kind of lose that. But I feel like they kind of, they could have used this case for more of like a strategic kind of plan and stuff like that, but, um, you know, obviously to, um, to no avail. So once when Bo Dallas was getting uh, getting beat down, he was laughing it off, he was laughing off the pain, the fans are getting kind of eerie. It was crazy. I, <laughs> the white six you haven't seen together uh, through like a, you know, through like ever since they made their debut and stuff like that. They came to the ring. You saw Eric Rowan. You saw Loomis. You saw, um, you know, Sister Abigail. You saw Mercy Buzzards and stuff like that. Uh, Joe Gacy. And it was crazy. It was pretty crazy. Whenever these guys like show up on the screen, 
they infiltrated the Pat McAfee show. Thought that was cool how they kind of, you know, how you kind of blur the lines between sports entertainment and, uh, you know, fiction. Uh, WWE K Fable loved that. Thought that was pretty cool. Uh, the Wide Six. After multiple, multiple, multiple videotapes, I just, you know, I feel like they're they're being really delicate with the situation. I feel like ever since Bray Wyatt passed away, and since they were kind of hinting at this Uncle Wyatt, Uncle, I mean Uncle Howdy promo when Bray was alive, and then he passed away, then um, a lot of people thought uh, Bo Dallas wasn't going to come back because you know there was a lot of speculations, a lot of you know criticism online saying that dude, like you cannot bring this Wyatt thing back. You cannot bring this back because ultimately it would not work without Bray. Without Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt's kind of like the glue that holds that horrific, that horror movie, that that eerie kind of feel within WWE promos, within WWE matches. And, um, you know, a lot of people thought it would not work. But so far, it seems like it has been. So far, it seems like Bo Dallas has done his brother, you know, pretty well. Uh, I think that they are kind of pushing it a little bit, but I get why. But uh, no, it was, uh, you know, definitely a pretty dynamite promo. I definitely loved it. Definitely love the way it's kind of going and stuff like that. Bo Dallas still has a, you know, still has a chip on his shoulder. Still feels like he has to, you know, show his brother, show the fireflies that he's out for their betterment. Also, the, the group as well. He's going to take care of them. He's going to take care of them, their family. That's, uh, you know, bro, uh, bro, bro Dallas. I like that, bro Dallas. <laughs> bro Dallas um, is a formidable competitor. He was He was great. I feel like his talent was ultimately it was it was pretty messed up. It was pretty messed up. I honestly think the way that they handled his character um, when Bo Dallas started in and when he started in Nexus, when he you know with his brother and stuff like that, and then uh, you know you had him be the goon squad of the Miz uh, when he was with Curtis Axel and stuff like that. And I got a you know chat from him. Yo, what's good? What's good, my man? Hope all is well. Hope you had a lovely weekend. Hope you're ready to talk some professional wrestling. Um, so. Yeah, but Dallas, I feel like, uh, you know, I get why they're kind of pushing it. I get why they're, um, you know, having videotape after videotape after videotape is uh, they, they need to be really delicate within this uh, storyline and this promo, this booking within uh, Bill Dallas and all these other uh, five individuals. So, you know, kind of crazy, kind of crazy. So, um, yeah, honestly, 1,010%. I loved it. I thought it was pretty cool. I think um, uh, the WWE continues to keep the, you know, the darkness and the faction future kind of, you know, kind of behind curtains, you know what I mean? Kind of just keeping it still absolutely, um, absolutely un not untellable. That doesn't make any sense. Unpredictable. Unpredictable. I didn't think of that word. Unpredictable. Uh, since their day, since their debut, I feel like they've all been kind of on the precipice of something that could be great within WWE, within the history and stuff like that in factions. And then, you know, definitely, uh, creating a horror-like feel around the lo around the locker room, fog, blood, so creepy. Kind of reminds me of like a walkthrough scare zone when you go to Not Scary Farm or Universal Studios or Six Flags here in California. And you know, a lot of people just pay for that. A lot of people pay to get scared. Obviously, like that's the reason why you're in horror movies. That's the reason why you go to these stuff. You know, during Halloween, and uh, you know, people love you know enticing their emotions. People love these. You know this horror like movie like this oh and it's just it kind of reminds me of like a cabin fever kind of what bray had um uncle howdy's obviously he's a little different um but this faction done really really well it could uh you know it could be crazy it could be crazy you know where does bo dallas stand right now i feel like uh he's definitely playing off that like that lunatic fringe kind of capability pretty well chad gable um uh, you know is he going to be uncle howdy's next victim i uh, you know if they decide to go at each other if they decide to finally fight in the future and stuff like that you know only time will tell i honestly thought like since kind of like when bray wyatt when the original wyatt family debuted you they kind of made more of an impact than what the Wyatt six is doing kind of right now but you know he's slow playing it taking it pretty slow obviously they're still waiting for that sixth member or maybe it's not going to be six you know maybe it's just the white six without six members you know what makes you think that there's going to be six members like you crazy no but like it's uh i get why they're you know they're taking their time and i feel like it's uh, it's much needed for wwe to be honest so you have all these stories all these stories all these talents that you have to take care of and, you know, especially heading towards Survivor Series, um, you know, you can bet these guys are probably going to be teaming up together 
I don't want to say in the War Games match. Oh, that would be so epic if they were in the War Games match. Oh, God, that'd be so cool. War Games match, where maybe you see them against the New Young Bloodline, the Tongans, Jacob Fatu, Solo Sokoa, and then, um, you know, damn. And then you have the Wyatt Six. That would be such a, that'd be the boss. That'd be the, one of the best bookings within WWE. But I think ultimately they're kind of saving Survivor Series for a chance for Roman Reigns to come back, ultimately be kind of kicked out of the New Young bloodline. So Los Sokoa makes an example out of him. No, Roman Reigns has no other choice but to uh, confront Jimmy, Jay, and probably Sami Zayn, some of his former running buddies to kind of help him out, apologizes, and he's like, look, I messed up, had some time to kind of think it over. Uh, once when I lost to Cody Rhodes, it kind of, you know, opened my mind up to different, you know, alternatives that, you know, made me realize that most important thing is family. Most important thing is family. That's the reason why the, they pushed the bloodline so hard. That's the reason uh, Roman Reigns, you know, although he has not had that many title runs, he's one of the longest reigning um, WWE Undisputed Champions of all time. And that just, you know, that just establishes the legacy of the Inouye family, also the Mayavias and also the Fatus. So, you know, definitely think that is a, something that Roman Reigns is probably going to use when he comes back. We'd we'll love to see it a thousand and ten percent. We'd love to see the Wyatt Six taking on the new young bloodline at Survivor Series. But we probably won't get it. Probably won't, you know, obviously that's wishful thinking, Eric. Wishful thinking. So yeah. All right, guys, now we're going to move on to our next segment. We just got done talking about Chad Gable and Uncle Howdy's future. Now we're going to talk about why exactly WWE is holding off Jey Uso. Is it strategic? Is there, you know, obviously there's a lot of talent on the Monday Night Raw roster. It's not easy to just kind of put somebody in there. So yeah, we're going to dive into it um, as soon as we come back from this short break. So hey, do not go anywhere. <laughs> 